It's beautiful to be here. I uh, was thinking about, we could spend 20 minutes talking about my truth, and it would be a kind of therapy. Remember that uh, we're in Leopoldstadt, which is uh, Sigmund Freud's uh, home bezirk. Um, yeah, I'd like to speak about public space and truth. We can see that there's some work going on on the street outside. That is because public space is continually evolving in Vienna. We are thinking about how to reallocate it so that there's more for people and less for cars. And a public space is um, the space between buildings. And I think that's a very important uh, phenomenon. A lot of people never think about public space. It's they just go to places and they don't think about the experience of being uh, in spaces. So um, the reason why I'd like to connect public space and truth is that increasingly we live in bubbles. We um, spend a lot of time online or in offices or on social media in spaces in which we are surrounded by people who are a lot like us. And public space is where you discover that there are other kinds of people in your city. This looks like a racist uh, message. Um, it's about all the people who should get out. And then there's a beautiful little uh, payoff at the end where it says, "Is tolles Wetter draußen, mag was zusammen. So it's, um, it's a, a clever way to provoke people. And this is the Donau Canal, which is one of Vienna's best public spaces. Um, what is a public space? It is a place where everybody is welcome, where there is no security guards, no locked doors, and uh, where you can do more or less what you want. And that's why Donau Canal is so valuable, because um, you can do more or less whatever you want there except in Corona time, there were a few rules. And you can see just across the Donau Canal there, um, it says Ute Bock. And she um, is a woman who, also in Leopoldstadt, did some great work on uh, integration, diversity, inclusion, especially with refugees. In uh, 2018, the Architektur Biennale's focus was exactly common ground, so shared space, the idea that um, uh, architects historically were interested in their own buildings, but increasingly since the new millennium, the focus is on those spaces between buildings. And of course, even architects love the space between buildings because if you have two beautiful buildings built beside each other, you can't see them. You need space in front of a building to enjoy it. And so those spaces are uh, extremely uh, valuable. Um, amongst the public space, so for example, the um, Altus AKH in Vienna is not public space. That uh, belongs to the University of Vienna, and it is sometimes closed. Uh, Wiener Linien is not public space. Um, there are plenty of rules on the world, those, uh, on, on, the, on the line. Um, Hofer is not public space. It closes at nighttime. Museumsquartier is not public space. Stadionbad, if you have to pay to get into somewhere, it's not public space. Um, but yeah, the connection between truth and public space is very valuable. And I'd like, if there's one message you go home with today, it's to understand how important it is to discover the fact that you may live your life, but then there's loads of other people living their own lives. And in public space, you can actually get to know them and uh, come to recognize the value uh, of uh, those interactions and those uh, playful spaces. Um, this is China in 1989, uh, a very memorable image in which one person is holding up a, a series of tanks. Uh, Gorbachev from the uh, Soviet Union uh, was visiting, and it was a hopeful moment for many Chinese. And this fellow was out, uh, he's got some shopping bags in his hand, and he decided to stand in front of a tank. And the tanks knew that the, the cameras were watching, and so they were all stopped by this one man. So public space is deeply political, and it's a place of demonstrations. Uh, we see that at the moment in, in Iran and in many other countries, a little bit even in Qatar, countries which are much less democratic. Um, this is a, a combination of the, the politics of public space, but also how it's changing. So this is a um, uh, painted in, in the pride style for, for inclusion, and yet it's so-called hostile uh, design in which homeless people cannot really sleep on this because there are all these uh, metal bars. So it's, d it's designed to be uncomfortable. Um, this is Zurich and the um, love parade, and uh, an iteration of that. Um, they've stopped happening uh, now, unfortunately, but um, it just shows you that there's something quite dramatic about taking over the roads and uh, showing what are alternatives um, in public space to actually uh, filling them up with cars. It's much more fun to have people in public space, and that's what demonstrations show, that it feels a bit naughty to uh, go into the streets and uh, do something alternative there. This is the World Naked Bike Ride, slightly pixelated, I'm sorry, um, in London, um, and it, that's Show it that's showing um, the fact that people are slightly vulnerable on bicycles and walking. Uh, it's important to say that uh, in future, car, uh, there will be lot, 
fewer cars in the city and a lot more people in public space. It is a terrible waste of public space to have parked cars. 98% of the time, cars are not moving. They're simply parked there. And there's so much more that we could be doing with those spaces. You know, we could be gardening or yoga class or dancing or playing, growing vegetables. Um, and this is a, a protest which happens um, every June. It happens in Vienna also. Hundreds of people get naked. And uh, it's the, the theme is as bet as bare as you dare. So not everybody is naked, um, but it's quite playful and uh, quite silly. This is Super Killen, great public space in um, from Bjorn Ingels in uh, Copenhagen. Um, this is a, a, a migrant neighborhood, uh, ex-industrial neighborhood, and they just decided to uh, paint the floor and see what would happen. There's a cycle lane going through the middle of it, lots of trees, and the original buildings were also um, red, orange, so they decided just to paint the floor and show what you can do with public space. This is in Dijon in France. Um, painting the road cha transforms it. You know, Roads are gray, buildings are generally gray in Vienna. More than 90% of our buildings are gray, but look uh, what you can do with the road. And of course it gets less hot uh, in, in an age of climate change if you paint your road white instead of uh, gray or black. Cars get extremely hot um, in summertime when they're parked on streets, and um, it's much more beautiful to have grass and trees and people instead of having just lots of parked cars. Um, this is the United Kingdom. Um, you can do outside what you used to do inside. And that's quite exciting also to um, just, just to provoke people by, uh, by showing that, um, you know, there's people inside cars, but we don't really interact with them. If you're driving through the city, you don't meet anybody, you know. Whereas if you're walking through, you meet lots of people who you know. Um, there are lots of these social dining projects around uh, Vienna. Hirschgasse has a, a famous one in uh, Maria Hilf, and the city of Vienna facilitates this very much. So you can get uh, funding for the meal, and people just cook upstairs and then bring the food down, and it's a way to open up a, a neighborhood. This is a parklet. I'd just like to show you. Um, there is, if you're looking for a funky alternative Christmas present, um, there is a collection of the best parklets. A parklet is the idea that you can see if you look across this street, there's lots of parked cars. And this is a movement born in San Francisco where instead of having cars on, uh, parked on a street, you create a mini park. So it's a place uh, in which to do your business outside instead of inside. Whatever you do inside your home, you know, whether that's reading a book, having a business meeting, having coffee, um, you know, having a yoga class, having a, a debate. You can have your lunch out there, and there's a, a, a beautiful uh, collection of them in Vienna. Highly inspiring uh, series of photographs of what you can do. And the city of Vienna will give you 4,000 euros to build one of these um, every summer uh, in front of your gallery. Uh, the only rule is that they should be non-commercial and uh, ideally have a bit of green space so that y you show, you know, and it's a way to build neighborhood because you discover who your neighbors are if instead of being inside the house, they are outside. There's also a street art guide, uh, Vienna, which I also recommend. They're available um, to, to buy. About 10 euros, something like that. Um, let's go back to my clicker. Um, the Americans really get the sense of public space, how to animate it, especially some of the black neighborhoods, because uh, they move chairs from inside their house to outside their house and uh, just see what happens. And if you sit outside your house, people are much more theatrical than if there's nobody there. You know, In Paris, the um, cafes are arranged so that uh, all of the uh, seating is facing the couloir, the sidewalk, and it changes how people walk through space if they know they're being watched, you know, it becomes much more sexy and dramatic. And uh, the Americans, of course, you know, they, they get that. They're, they're not too shy or self-conscious. Vienna is a city full of uh, a lot of anxiety. And the, these two fellows aren't feeling that. Uh, flash mobs were a big thing about, about 10 years ago. They've kind of gone out of fashion now, I think, a little bit. But it is lovely just to suddenly, uh, apparently spontaneously, um, have, a, have a little party in the streets. Normally, it's one brave person who starts. And then they make a film, and then suddenly everybody joins in, um, whether they can dance or not. Uh, football fans, we see this a little bit at the moment in Qatar, but not enough. It, there's no football culture there, but football fans take over the streets in a slightly drunken way. And a, yeah, I like creative chaos. I'm going to speak about that a little bit later. This is Bristol, which was uh, announced as Britain's first play city, where they wanted to encourage more people to play in public space. It's quite a hilly city. You can probably sense that um, it's quite steep there. And they built a slide 
um, with lots of soap and water and people were encouraged. You can see that we've got Spider-Man at the top of the chute there about to go down. So people are encouraged just to be a bit silly and to race down. There's quite a good film of this event. Uh, they tried it in Meidling, but it didn't quite work uh, in Vienna because people don't dress up quite as much. Um, this is a parade in Edinburgh. Um, parades are slightly more passive where um, you are the audience and uh, it's much more fun to be, be the show rather than just watching and clapping the show. Um, this is how Stefan's Dom, Stefan's Platz, used to look. Um, and it's a reminder that you, c you really should transform your space. There's a big debate in Vienna at the moment um, about how much space we should give to, to parked cars and how much we should give back to people. So it's much more inviting now, much more lively. Um, the shops are much um, busier, cafes and everything, but it used to be full of parked cars. Um, you can see what's happen happened to Amhof. It's even developed a bit more now, but it's uh, much more social, even if there aren't too many people in the photo underneath. Um, but we used to give space to cars, and increasingly we give it to people. Maria Hilferstrasse, great success. There was a big campaign from the shop owners and many of the residents against this uh, development of turning it into a Begegnungszone, but it's much more fun to walk through Maria Hilferstrasse now. And if you look on, on uh, Google maps from above um, at, the, at a photograph. It looks like a forest now, Maria Hilferstrasse. The city spent a lot of money transforming it, but um, almost none of the shops want to go back to how Maria Hilferstrasse used to be because they can see that it's much cleaner now, much safer, uh, much more fun. And uh, there's frankly a lot more people there now, and they spend a lot longer on it. Museums Quartier is a great success. Remember, it's only 20 years old. If you were in Vienna um, 25 years ago, there was hardly any great public space. We saw a photograph of uh, Stefan's Dom. So it's a good news story that uh, the city does a lot of research, takes a lot of time to make sure that there are these spaces in which people can come together. It's not technically public space, but it's open pretty much to everybody. It's also one of the few places in Vienna in which tourists and locals come together, auf Augenhöhe, and those are very valuable. Um, Vienna was voted last November the least friendly city in the whole world. <laughs> and uh, it's not, actually, but um, it's a shame that uh, it takes time to get to know Vienna. If you first arrive here as an immigrant, remember that 36% of adults in Vienna were not born in Austria. And um, this is one of the places where you can go along and make some friends, like at Donau Canal. Silent Disco, I am a DJ all over the city. And by the way, I was looking at all the speakers in here. You see all these? fat speakers here. Uh, I'm not actually plugged into them, but it would be quite loud if they ever were <laughs> engaged, all these uh, big old school amps. Um, silent discos are, are a great idea. It looks ridiculous when you're walking past to see uh, hundreds of people dancing with no music, but actually there's rival DJs, and that's quite good theatre because you can tell which people are dancing to one DJ or the other, and it certainly it, it adds to the theatre because normally in a club you, um, you would have uh, different rooms for different DJs, whereas here they're in the same room, and it's quite competitive, quite theatrical, um, and that's uh, just behind them is... Um, Urania, just to give you a sense that uh, this is also an image from, from Leopoldstadt. Uppenplatz. There is a clean version of Vienna, a kind of sweet, slightly kitsch um, uh, version of, of this city, which sells very well um, all around the world. Um, things like the Elmeyer Dance School, um, snow globes, you know, that you shake, and then you've got CC. Um, CC and Schnitzel, Sacker Torte, Schönbrunn. The Neujahr's Concert, Sect, this is Sweet Vienna, Baroque Palaces, Ball Culture, Manerschnitte, the Strauss Denkmal, um, Fiakas, Costume Concerts, and um, this is the version of Vienna which is sold to tourists, and it sells very well. I was reading that the average visitor to Vienna is 12 years older than the average visitor to Prague. And that is catastrophic, you know, that cool people just don't come to our city. You know, hardly anybody flies into Vienna for a party weekend. If they did, they would be sorely disappointed. <laughs> they go to Barcelona or to Ibiza or to Amsterdam, London, Berlin. They don't come here. Um, but Uppenplatz is one of the spaces in which you get the salty Vienna, um, so the contrast to the sweet Vienna. And that is uh, the Wiener Dialect, uh, Egon Schiele's paintings, uh, the Wiener Lieder very melancholy. Sigmund Freud, the Westgürtel is also a, a great space. The, the rents are low and uh, it's very diverse. It's young, it's kind of wild. Um, there's lots of uh, drugs and, and um, sex, but it's also a space in which um, 
uh, you you discover an alternative Vienna, which is a bit more creative, um, and there's lots of art art scene around there. The nude scene on the Donau Insel, Wurstelstand Kultur at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, MA48. I'm a big fan of this kind of street. You know, they're they're very charismatic uh, when I make tours. Um, I wear orange trousers because I want to show that um, it's a beautiful thing to have uh, guys and women and men who, whose job is to clean the street. It's a disgusting job, but they do it with real pride and engagement, and we should all learn a lot from them. Um, yeah, so there's th the rest of Salty Vienna is Young Hohen and Chokl, these kind of late night drunken bars, Arena, Gemeindebauten, um, Falter. Uh, Time Out magazine in London spends the first 20 pages celebrating London like a cheerleader. And Falter spends the first 20 pages kicking Vienna in the face, you know, about corruption and Nazis. And uh, it's only after that that they start to speak about music and art and films and culture. So the Viennese are um, perhaps a bit too critical. Um, truth and lies, yeah. I'd like to, um, I have a son, by the way, I wanted to say, um, a, a 10 year old son. And public space is completely transformed when you are a dad because, or a mum because children don't care too much you know they play everywhere they talk to strangers they uh, dance every day they draw on walls and f each other and faces and they ask big questions but they make friends immediately and if you walk around the city with a kid you make friends quite quickly because it's having a dog or a baby that's the answer to uh, opening up vienna i'm thinking about creating a dog and baby rental service do, do you think it might work just for an hour you know you can borrow someone else's kid because suddenly the viennese start to talk to you if you've got uh, if you've got a baby so i recommend it um uh yeah um, burst your social media bubble. Get out there in public space. You know, enjoy these spaces. They are um, not just uh, politically and socially valuable. They are also economically valuable because the more people you know, the more jobs you get. The more people you know, the more relationships you will be in. Um, but it's also very good for our mental health. We discovered this uh, in Corona time that um, loneliness is, is makes you more sick than uh, alcohol and cigarettes combined really bad for you to spend too much time on your own and yet people in an age of social media are spending more and more time <coughs> away from each other and think about organizing your next meeting as a walk or as a uh, in a park you know we don't have an office and uh, I work for an art collective whoosh and that means that um, every day I'm in a new bit of Vienna you know meeting people exploring it and um, it's very productive to not have an office even though you know it makes some people nervous because they say well where are you exactly and, and the whole city is our playground you know we want to be out there we live in an age of fake news um, which is toxic we see this with uh, Trump and Twitter and Sebastian Kurz FPÖ I would like to hear some more truth about the value of migrants um, to Vienna I think it's, uh, if you look at the, uh, how this city was before the age of uh, migration, before it joined the European Union and before the fall of the Berlin Wall, this was nobody's favorite city. It didn't have high quality of life. The coffee was terrible. Thanks for the coffee this morning. But also the, um, the food wasn't great. The fashion was terrible. The music was really bad, you know, before FM Fear. And it is exactly uh, having migrants, having one third of the students in Vienna are uh, migrants, they come from all over the world and they stay here once they've graduated because they really enjoy what they see. So it's, uh, I wish that we understood the economic value of migrants because you can see how many jobs there are. We're trying to fill at the moment here in bakeries and hospitals and uh, kindergartens because there aren't enough migrants. So I wish for more truth on that. Also on Brexit, I'd like to say something about Brexit because um, it is embarrassing, frankly, being British at the moment. You know, we read lots of <laughs> terrible news out of my country. Um, and it used to be if I said I was British, people would wanted to talk about, um, you know, music or Banksy or uh, Harry Potter or football. And now they just want to know what the hell is going on in your country. And I'm trying to explain it myself. But one of the um, explanations is that 81% of the newspapers sold in Britain uh, in the six months before Brexit uh, election were um, campaigning for Brexit. And I think that's not so well known in, in Vienna, that, that um, there is a toxic atmosphere in Britain of these uh, conservative newspapers, um, which are very popular, and which don't tell the truth about Brussels, about the role of the European Union, and about Britain's place within it. So, um, and those newspapers are owned by five billionaires, and four of them do not live in the United Kingdom. So they're campaigning for things which don't really affect them, but they want the freedom. 
so-called freedom. But Brexit was completely based on lies, and I just wanted to say that. Um, we organize an event called Coffee House Conversations in which strangers sit together one-to-one uh, -to -one for two hours. We've done it with refugees. We've done it also with UN diplomats. And um, on the 12th of December, I invite you all to come along. Uh, we want to revive the Coffee House tradition of debate and late night uh, discussion, engagement, networks. You know, Vienna in 1900 was super alive with avant-garde thinking, and some of the cafes have become a little bit kitsch now, but we'd like to put that back, that sense of uh, late night debate over a bit of red wine. So um, we have a question menu, and um, there is an incredible freedom in speaking to somebody who you don't know. Uh, you might have had this experience on a train of talking to somebody, having a really intense long conversation because you 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 build trust uh, through mutual revelation and um, the questions are really um, odd but because you're sitting with a stranger you can talk about them and they're, they're quite lively you build a, a personal biography um, this is Otto Bauergasse in Maria Hill for great successful uh, space so it's not just about these kind of set piece big places like Donaukana it's also about thinking about whether people should be allowed to walk down the middle of the road. On Maria Hilferstrasse, if you walk down the middle of the street, nobody doots their horn, they just drive very slowly around you. And that's how it should be, because we as walkers, I don't have a car, are much more, uh, much better for the environment than uh, cars. The Italians get it right over and over again with public space. Um, this is Siena, and I love the tradition of uh, passeggiata. You know, that they go out before dinner uh, as a family and walk up and down. They're not going anywhere in particular. They just want to know which city they live in. And it's a beautiful thing. Lots of gossip and lots of social engagement. Uh, this is the Friday night skate, um, which happens in Vienna uh, once a month, also in the winter. And it's a beautiful thing. Lots of energy. This is Siena. Uh, again, and um, one of the odd things about Italian um, squares, these, and we learnt a lot about how to make a public square, is that, have a look at the difference between that and Karlsplatz, what's the difference? Trees, right? The Italians don't have any trees in their squares, and it's, um, it's an interesting, surprising idea um, that uh, you don't need trees. Um, it's quite hot, but it's also quite sexy. Uh, brain after sitting quietly, brain after walking around. You see this? It's a great business tool to be out there. You get a lot more energy into, you know, you get more air, more blood into your, into your brain, more air into your lungs. Um, you're much more creative after 20 minutes of walking. Street capital is our idea that um, if you look at um, a lot of the rich neighborhoods in Vienna, if you go to Heatsing or to Döbling, it's full of parked cars because rich people are quite busy. They don't spend much time hanging out on the streets. Um, you know, they think they're busy and they've got big gardens. Whereas poor people, if you go to Favoriten or to Otterkring, what is this box here for? Some, some kind of challenging thing. Do you mind? Yeah? I will fall over it in a minute. Maybe I should have stood on it. I'm not very tall. Um, street capital is the idea that, um, think about um, if you go to the poor neighborhoods, the migrant neighborhoods, they are much more fun to walk through. It's a Fellini-esque measure of how lively your local street is. And we immigrants spend a lot more time outside than the locals do, and poor people spend more time outside than rich people. Just quickly go through them. Uh, this is Jane Jacobs, uh, my, my hero from New York City, talking about the web-like networks of individuals who exchange knowledge and information about creative ideas and opportunities. So just like Creative Mornings does it, so Public Space does it, because you meet friends of friends, and you go for a coffee together, and it feels good. Uh, this is the trend in uh, less cars in Vienna towards 2030. We have uh, eight years to go. Uh, and much more public transport, but also more people walking and more people cycling. We need more of that. Uh, we are Wush, and um, there's lots more to say, but um, we're going to open it up in a more uh, interactive way. But Wush.wien is our website where we create lots of collaborations with all kinds of other groups, um, including Komhaus, which was a three-day forum, uh, a like home, where we wanted to animate public space. It's not enough just to close a street to people. You need to show people what else you can do, you know, to have parties and gardens and, you know, public uh, tree, which you can water and look after. So um, have a look at our website, wush.wien. Thank you very much, Al Chabin. Thank you. Thank you.